We'll call the meeting to order. Um, it was oftentimes called the, um, the, the meeting where there is a re-election of the board reappointments, and we'll get to that in a minute. And when, once we have a chair appointed, the chair will, will uh, t take over this meeting. But um, I will call the meeting to order at 7.05. Um, let's see, 7.05. And, um, and ask everybody if you would please join me in uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. very much. Well, um, at this point, I would um, accept nominations for school board chair. Are there any nominations? Yes, I would like to nominate Elizabeth Seifries for our school board chair for the year of 2016-2017. I'll second that. Uh, actually, we don't need a second for an election of cha oh. chair. Um, are, there, are, there, are there other nominations? Um, then I'm going to declare, well, would you be willing to accept the chair seat if appointed? Uh, yes. Okay. I was about to be, be flipped and run out of here, but... <laughs> we'll tackle you. Uh, okay, so um, then I'm going to declare nominations closed and uh, ask the, those of you that are, are in support of the motion, which is to, uh, the nomination is to um, elect Elizabeth uh, Sky Freeze is the chair to please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous. And so congratulations. And Boy, thank back you. It's good. Chair. <laughs> I do have one question, and I, and I have David Hillman running through my mind, and so I apologize for those who understand the reference. Um, on our agenda, it does have a motion and a second. Is that just incidental? You mean on the on these nominations? Yes. I just think that it's your standard form, but all I know is that Robert's Rules does not require a second because anybody can nominate anybody who is eligible for a seat and doesn't require. Then you all would then vote on the very few people nominated. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't require a second. Fabulous. To I just wanted that clarification I, I, right. for all since it's laid out on tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, don't be. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sorry I seconded it. <laughs> I wrote it down just in case. It, it was, it's not a motion, it's a nomination. It's a nomination. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, um, I'm taking nominations for school board vice chair, please. I would like to nominate Suzanne Mizell Hubs for vice chair. I'm going to follow protocol. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none. All those in you, you closed nominations. Closed nominations. And all those in favor? Does Suzanne want to answer? Uh, I think I'm we can answer. Are here. you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Right. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to serve again. Item C, appointment of committees. Does this require a motion and a second? Well, I uh, the, these are not officers of the board, correct? Okay. Is correct. that right? That's correct. So I think they that, do. I think, I mean, if it was me, I think I would just take a motion. I mean, I, I wouldn't take a formal motion. I would just say who, I, I recommend so and so and just be, be, let, let it be simpler. If, of course, be simpler may be more complicated. <laughs> Taking nominations for um, finance chair. I nominate Joe Morrissey to be our finance chair. Are there other nominations? Seeing none, the nominations are, we don't have to close. These are committee appointments. So, Joe, are you willing? I am willing. To Thank accept. you. All those in favor? And um, sorry, we probably should have done this together, but um, we are also taking nominations for policy chair and policy committee members. I nominate uh, Barbara Powers for chair, policy chair. And can I nominate myself? Yes, you can. Okay. And I nominate Heather Altmer, myself, and Kimberly Carr as committee members to that policy committee. 
I second. Thank or, you. No second. <laughs> we're so it's we are so <laughs> off off the rails here tonight. Um, I've also got the math. And all those in favor? Thank you. Um, we are tabling the committee appointment to the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. Um, could I please have a motion for the committee appointments that go from the first page to the top of the second page? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to um, make the committee appointments for PAS or um, if I'm saying this incorrectly, please tell me for John Boltz. Uh, for Student Wellness Committee, for Heather Altenberg and John Boltz. The Technology Steering Committee, Kimberly Carr and Susanna Mazel have me. Transportation Appeals, Barbara Powers. Buildings and Ground, Heather Altenberg. 2016-17 uh, Superintendent Search Advisory Screening, Susanna Mazel Hubs, Joe Morrissey and John Boltz. And Negotiations, Joe, Joe, Joe Morrissey and Elizabeth Cypress. May have a second? Just in case. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Um, now for may have advisory committees, please. For advisory committees, um, to the legislative, li as the leg legislative liaison, Kimberly Carr and alternate um, Barbara Powers. Mm -hmm. um, for the dropout prevention committee, Kimberly Carr. For the town comprehensive plan 2000, that goes until 2019, um, Susanna Mazel Hubs. And then for the calendar committee, Heather Altenberg and Elizabeth Seifries. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Well, congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Moving on to item number two, adjustments to the agenda. Do we have any adjustments to tonight's agenda? Seeing none. Item three, may I have a motion please? I move that we approve the school board minutes, A, B, and C under, under three A, B, and C. A second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item four, comments by student representatives. Hello. Um, so one of the most exciting things about this time of the year are um, college acceptances. So um, thus far, my grade has gotten acceptances from schools like Harvard, UVM, Columbia, St. Lawrence, UMO, and many more. Um, and that's just a few. My and goodness, that's pretty impressive. I know, right? <laughs> it's really exciting for everyone. Um, and another thing about this time of the year is that stress is really high just because it's the middle of the quarter, um, right before vacation, but morale at the school is really high as well. Um, everyone's excited for the holidays, so everyone's in a pretty good mood, um, no matter how stressful. And winter sports are starting up, so the boys' hockey team and girls' hockey team have both had games and the boys and girls basketball teams have had games. The track meet has their first meet on fr Friday. The track team has their first meet on Friday. Ski team will get started up after vacation. And the math and science team have both had meets this month, both of which went very well. And the debate team won its most recent meet and the speech team, as usual, won as well. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. 
Moving on to item five, comments from the public on agenda items. At this time, if anybody would like to speak? Seeing none. Item six, communications. Principal Shedd, would you like to start us off? You have a letter in your packet, I think, dated November 4th, 2016 from NIESC. And I will say that having met with the board and talked to the board a few times last year, I think the board members who were here before will recognize that the recommendations that um, are contained in this letter are quite consistent with the things that we talked about, expected, and knew we were going to get. They have to do primarily with school-wide rubrics um, and continued development of curriculum on common templates and that sort of thing. So the way these... Um, letters are structured, it's sort of a, uh, it, they have sort of a formula. So at the very beginning are a, a bunch of commendations. They are divided into two different groups that go on to the back of the first page. And then um, there is then a beginning of a series of recommendations um, the soonest of which require the school to submit a special progress report by September 15th of this coming fall uh, to the committee to to address essentially what they regarded the NIES, the visiting team said, these are the areas that are the most important based on NIES standards. They basically have to do with school-wide rubrics um, and professional development connected to school-wide rubrics and the formal process for communicating student progress against school-wide rubrics and that sort of thing. Although I will say that since um, uh, our visiting team visited Cape Elizabeth High School and they asked actually changed its standards a little bit to make them more flexible in some pretty meaningful ways around the issue of school-wide rubrics. So there's actually a more school-friendly, realistic um, sort of definition of what constitutes sort of school-wide rubrics or what meets that particular standard. So I am comfortable that we'll be in good shape uh, for those progress reports. We've already finished developing three of the school-wide rubrics, begun to identify assessments that will be used and that sort of thing. We will actually go back and revisit them and probably simplify them a little bit because of the changed, um, the, the changed language of the standard. And in a nutshell, so, sort of what happens when you, a school-wide rubric that is sort of a uniform rubric, for example, for writing. The dilemma of that, the, the good thing about that is if it can be developed and be developed in an educationally meaningful way is it allows teachers to communicate with kids using a common language, whether they're in history or English or science or social studies or whatever. What gets tricky and almost pushes you to develop rubrics that are so generic that they begin to lose their meaningfulness is that, is that they have to apply to everything from science lab reports, for example, to creative writing essays, to short stories, to poetry, and that sort of thing. So NIASC, I think, has recognized that after experimenting with this really quite unique standard for quite a few years, and they have backed off and said, you don't need to have a unified rubric to apply to all those things. What you do need to have is a set of criteria that are common across um, different disciplines and that sort of thing. And that is a much more um, usable, educationally valuable um, sort of redefinition or, uh, of, of the metric that NIESC uses connected to school-wide rubrics. It is the biggest issue that schools across New England have been struggling with to try to adopt things that are educationally meaningful that meet the requirement of a school-wide rubric. So that is that. Um, it's not unusual to have a special progress report. Um, when I got here first, when I first arrived here a long time ago now, I think I had to write three of those within the space of a year and a half. Um, and it's quite common for schools to need to write a special progress report. Then if you go down further, you will see um, 
that every school who goes through the NIES process has to do a two-year progress report, a five-year progress report, and a 10-year progress report. So the next set of bulleted um, items are um, additional highlighted recommendations in the report that, that are considered highlighted recommendations. And what that means is that when we write a two-year progress report, those have to be reported on first, um, and they are sort of the more highlighted recommendations. And then we have to respond to all of the other recommendations that are in the report as well. Um, so that's, that's really it. Um, the accreditation of the school was continued. Um, and the visiting team worked really, really hard. Um, I appreciated in particular the um, willingness of Peter Brown, the, the visiting team chair, to listen to a lot of feedback that we gave um, along the way as the, this report was in the process of being finalized. And I really believe that the, that the end result um, was sort of consistent with what we expected, consistent with what a direction um, that uh, we think is educationally valuable. And we will make those changes um, in accordance with the timeline that NIESC has set forth. I will also say that the flexibility in the school-wide rubrics requirement also means that it's actually now easier and more practical to really almost virtually completely align this work and the progress on this work with the progress that we need to make anyway towards proficiency-based education standards. So that I think will be really, really good because um, it will feel less like two different things happening in parallel, but it will be more like two streams sort of coming together. That's kind of the way I would think of it. So. That is the accreditation report, unless anybody has any questions. Questions? Mm -hmm. I, I, um, thank you for sharing this, and I'm really happy to hear about that movement. That'll make your work a lot more authentic instead of figuring stuff out. I think with all the work that went into this with Mr. Shedd and his staff and report outs and visits and so forth, I think it would be worth three minutes to read into the record paragraph two and three in the commendations. These are st stunning. And I think it'd be good for our listening audience to hear them. So would you mind reading those out loud? <laughs> or would you rather have Ms. Seyfried read them out loud? I'm happy to read them. That's, that's fine. Um, whatever. Or I'm happy to have you read them too, Elizabeth, whichever. OK. So the, the beginnings and what, what um, Barbara's referring to is the commendations that the committee pointed out. Um, so it says, the committee was impressed with many of the programs and services and wishes to commend the following, the use of common rubrics within several departments, the development and implementation of the CAPE acronym, the creation of measure measurable 21st century learning expectations, the ongoing dedication to innovative projects that align with the school's core values, beliefs, and learning expectations, such as TEDx, Youth Events, iSearch, Sophomore Research Project, Junior Policy Project, and the Senior Transition Project, the high percentage of juniors and seniors choosing to challenge themselves in AP classes, the availability of many types of technology in classrooms for faculty and students, the school's numerous and diverse clubs and activities which enhance the core curriculum, the variety of programs that have been designed and implemented to assist students who are struggling, for example, the Achievement Center, the Achievement Period, and Freshman Academy, the research projects at all four grade levels that reflect the commitment to research, the dedicated teachers who seek feedback for individual and collective opportunities to improve instructional practices, the communication of specific learning goals and skills prior to each unit of study and the consistency of this practice across all departments, the collaboration among departments with the six plus one writing rubric, and then it pointed out several others. The committee was pleased to note the following. The regular review and revision of grading and reporting practices within departments to ensure alignment within those departments. The principal's openness and accessibility to both students and faculty. The minimal student behavioral issues showing that students take responsibility for their actions. The principal's enthusiastic support of teacher-generated ideas to improve student learning. The expertise of library and instructional technology specialists the caring support personnel, the wide range of services and varied resources in the library and learning commons, the continued use of the return to learn concussion protocol, the cleanliness of the school, the short and long-term plans to meet future district and school needs, 
the generously apportioned physical plant and site, and the many opportunities of community support and partnerships, including the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation and the High School Parents Association. Thank you. Quite a list. I think those are worth saying out loud. I mean, that's just fabulous. Thank you. Moving on to budget review process. Joe, would you be willing to speak to that? I would love to speak to that. So this year, we've actually put our nose to the grindstone early and with some fabulous suggestions from our fellow school board member, Barbara Powers, in coming up with some fabulous um, recommendations, we have come up with a <clears throat> draft um, process to go through the budget. Um, including starting as early as January. And so our focus this year is right out of the gate, instead of going right into numbers and the nuts and bolts, is to start by going over and, and reviewing our budget from a needs-based and a story of what it is that we need in order to make our school as best as it possibly can so that we can continue to have reports on our schools um, and with the accommodations that were just read out by Jeff Shedd. So we start on Tuesday, January 24th, and we'll, we'll give some back, budget background in the first couple of meetings. The first meeting will focus on the background for major teaching and learning considerations, student, student demographics and staffing impact, and new programs or any additional staff needed. Then the next meeting will be on February 28th, and the budget background story will continue um, with some needs-based understanding around technology, support systems, and infrastructure, and the short review of the budget binder itself, which will finally be into our hands um, probably the week before, did we say? Before um, the February break. So over break, you'd have something to read in case you were looking for that. Um, and then we were going to roll up our sleeves and on Tuesday, March 7th, have sort of a, a, an extended budget workshop for three and a half hours in the video, um, and it will be videotaped in the Library of Learning Commons, and we'll go over um, a review of the numbers in the budget and how those numbers tie out to the story that we've just been um, hearing about in the previous meetings. Um, and then after that, we're going to then have some time to sit on those numbers and have the opportunity for both the school board members as well as community members to submit questions so that we have time to then research and give thoughtful um, consideration to those answers and then have a meeting on March 21st to go over those. And then again on March 28th to again go over any outstanding questions um, and review a straw poll for the preliminary budget and get a feeling for how the school board feels about how the budget has landed. And then on Tuesday, April 11th, actually adopt the budget. Um, or adopt the proposed budget um, by the school board and vote to send it to the town council. And then it, turn, it turns into the town council's hands. We have a school board workshop where we hand that over to the town council on Tuesday, April 25th. Um, and if there need be, there's a um, separate date for a wrap up on April 26th. Um, there's a budget hearing, a public hearing with the town council of regular town council chambers on Monday, May 8th. And then town council actually votes on adoption of the school board on Monday, May 15th, and then it goes out for validation to the voters on June 13th. Any questions or further clarity? I like the new approach. Yeah. I'm looking I forward to it. I'm excited about this new approach to not just diving right into the numbers, but having a conversation about the needs in the school district as a whole. Right. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Barbara, for the suggestions. Thank you. Moving on to item 6C, superintendent's report. Yep. Um, I include um, the CEF grants in what I have written down. Let me talk about the other two. I didn't write those down. Um, I wanted just to be sure that we're all in agreement on the um, way that we're going to make decisions around school cancellations and delayed starts. Um, I want you to know that I, I, I've um, 
had really great support and contact with Public Works. They've been great. And, and, um, and Bob has called, and even over the weekend we've talked, and uh, been very helpful. But he and I just want to know how it works. He and I at least speak around, around 4.30 the, any morning where we're concerned. And my hope is that by 5 or 5.15 to be able to make a decision. But you need to understand that you're making a decision sometimes hours before school starts. And so you haven't got the luxury of looking at it that afternoon and wondering what the heck. But just understand it's a serious um, decision. Uh, always the intent is to err on the side of student safety. And so if, if it's uh, questionable, it could very well be that school will be delayed or canceled because there's concern um, for the, the students and the drivers and our employees who drive in, in some cases, a very long distance to get to work. Um, I, I, I do speak, uh, another morning I spoke with um, Portland, South Portland, and Scarborough, the, the four of us, actually we were texting, um, which is new for me, um, <laughs> but it, it is effective. And um, so I just want you to know that I do speak to our neighboring districts before I make a decision. Um, South Portland, I understand, does not do delayed starts. It's just we're open or we're sh closed. I personally feel sometimes there's a real advantage in a delayed start. I hope that you feel that's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, my feeling is usually it's just, it, there's nothing other than it's either a two hour delay or it's a full day school or it's no school, mm -hmm. none in one hour or three hours, it's two or nothing. Um, I am not a fan of early release. If we've got them, we're gonna keep them until the end of the day. I think it's really hard on families to rush home. They didn't expect the child to be there um, three hours or two hours early. I just think that the, once they're at school, they're safe. I mean, that's a safe place to be. Um, I mean, obviously, there's exceptions to this. There could be a time when we have no power and, and we have to get them out of there. That, that Maybe, but I mean, because the snow, snow's coming down, I'm not really one, unless you tell me you want me to think about this way, of once we have them, we, we keep them. Now, sometimes the roads are such that we need to let them out early in order to get home at the time they normally would get home. We may sometimes may leave the school an hour early, but they're gonna, with the idea that it'll take them an hour longer to get them to their doorstep. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Heather, do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the idea would be that we, we would do our best to have, once they get at school, a, a, a normal day for the children and for their families. Um, on, I don't know what the tradition here is about about when school is canceled. If uh, about athletics, I don't know if you if the storm clears, if you allow there to be practice or games, is it shut down? I believe it's shut down. I believe that if there um, if there's school affiliated teams, that they cannot practice. Okay. But. If they're club teams, it might be under a different. Well, that's right. We don't control it, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, so, Jeff, do you. So there are times, and I don't know exactly. For example, yesterday, uh, we did have there were some practices in our gymnasium, but in the middle school gymnasium. I think I think that follows conversations with Greg um, about how clear the streets are, and I think it's also the bottom line. So there were some things that were going on, and I know Jeff may have contacted me, and I talked to Jeff Dork, and he said there were athletic things, and I talked to Greg Marles, and he said, yep, the storm was getting over really early. Um, so I don't think it's always been automatic. I don't think it's been, I don't think there's been a, a single rule that applies. I think it's a consultation with people who say things are true about that. And who's involved in that? Would you be involved, or would it be Jeff, the athletic director? That it would be either Jeff or me, and Greg Morrow would definitely be involved in it, because he's, his office is in charge of transportation, and he has an open running with Bob Malley at public works. So I think it's something that would be handled by the athletic director. Okay. What about around middle school? And I'm curious about games, though. Practice, there's some consultation, but if school's canceled, 
Uh, some, that's, that's also has been, I'm not saying this is the right answer, but it has been sort of a case by case thing. Um, when it's games, the superintendent usually gets consulted as well. Um, and part of it depends on what's happening with the other schools that we're, that we're playing, um, which which we're going to play. So I'm not aware that they're going to have to be part of that school. I don't believe it has been. Generally speaking, you know, if it's a far away game, or you know, those, those will not happen. Because typically, if there's something right in the area, and it's typically practice, it's not so much games. Jeff Thor would be better to speak to the games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know that, that when um, school is canceled or there's a delay, we do send out a warning um, uh, on a, uh, cell phones or home phones if people ask for that, I think. So if anyone that doesn't have that, if they call the schools, we can be sure they're connected to that. It also is posted online. Somebody posted it on the school's district website, so it's another option. Um, and in the newspapers, but I think that... Sign up for weather alerts from the news stations, which are very yeah, reliable. They are. It's amazing. Um, so I, I think that, is that, do you have any questions about how, the way that we're going to... I, I don't have any questions, but just, just thinking for the first time about you know, how to handle practices, I know that, um, that it, it has been a case-by-case -case basis, and even the parents and the students sometimes aren't sure. Like the parents are saying, I, no, I, I think you have practice. The kids saying, no, I don't have practice. At least my kids. Um, <laughs> I don't have practice. I don't have to go. So it'd be nice to know what is the protocol, you know, like to have a protocol in place so everybody's clear one way or the other, mm -hmm. parents and students, on those afternoons that the weather's cleared up. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a request that maybe that Jeff or at a future meeting and explain that? Is that, is that what you're asking for? Um, I, I don't know who would be best to um, come up with the protocol if it would be just, you know, like who ultimately who would make the, who should make that call. Well, it's also play practice and debate and everything. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I, it sounds like what she's asking for it would make sense, which is there seems to be confusion. So some clarity, even if it's a check with me or under these circumstances, check with me. What does that actually look like? So yeah. just so that there's, you could follow, wouldn't necessarily change what we're doing, but we'd give clarity around what it is we're doing. Right. Mike, do you get involved with this? Uh, not so much. We just we typically don't run any activities. Right. When, when, when school's canceled, no activities, pretty much. That's been my experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Jeff, you and I can maybe yeah. get, back, get back to the board on this. Okay, we will. I would agree that communication around it is sometimes a little <laughs> okay. I think we'll, we'll get back. Probably a little inconsistent based on the coach or the person in charge of it. Is, is my guess that some of them are on top of it? I mean, my kids. I got notices saying that there was that it was canceled, but I I can imagine that some coaches might not have reached out, just assuming that parents knew because there was no school. Okay, I've got that. So moving along here, um, I, w I wanted to um, also bring it to your attention that the basketball courts, as you know, are being redone. Um, and apparently tomorrow they'll be cleaning the floors, but, but Thursday will be the first day that they're really utilized both by the physical education teachers, but also I believe there are gonna be some home games that day. I believe that it's going to be um, the girls' varsity and the girls' JV basketball teams will be playing their first home game on this new court wow. Thursday evening, so that's pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Howard, mm -hmm. I would like to just take a moment and sort of publicly recognize that the work, the amazing coordination that had to take place and Greg Marles' role in getting that gym up to speed in the middle of a school year in an unplanned emergency. That was some amazing feat of coordination and the list of, of vendors that he had to ensure that were shifting in and out on a timely schedule and, and supplies and meetings and 
I, I just, if he's listening, or perhaps we can just make sure that he understands that the board deeply appreciates all that effort. I'll, I'll be sure to relay that. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more, but I'd also want to go on and say that um, it's, it's appreciated that we have physical education teachers that have had to adjust mm -hmm. their curriculum and activities around all this as well. And we have coaches that have had to schedule uh, practices and a lot of other events off of school grounds. I mean, it's been a lot of individuals and students that have had to kind of take on, you know, do what we didn't expect and have done well at it. And we thank everybody, but certainly uh, your points well taken about Greg and what he's done to organize all that. Thank you. Um, regarding SEAF grants, there were two that were approved this fall. The, apparently there's a, there's a fall and then there's a spring season for grants to be submitted and, and, uh, and vetted. Uh, the two that were approved for this fall, one is to Nathaniel Clay for uh, the musical production studio at the high school. It's about, I think, equipment to go in the music room for sound and it's for $1,969, which is very generous to be supported uh, in that way. And then the second is to the middle school uh, under a proposal submitted by Principal Tracy um, for $3,000 for what's called the Festival of Curiosity. Do you want to uh, explain that? You could do a certainly a better job than I can. Sure. <laughs> Please, anywhere. So the public in, at home can hear you. That's great. Happy to, happy to do it. So um, last year we had um, two parents initiated an event called the Festival of Curiosity. And it was an um, afternoon and evening experience where they set up several um, stations where different teachers and some people from the community and a couple of vendors came and gave um, hands-on experiences around technology and engineering and science and experiments and all kinds of things um, for students to come and just experience and and you know kind of awe and wonder kinds kinds of things so um, moving forward into this year um, I was approached and uh, by Jill Abramson who is taking this on and asked if we would consider having this during the school day and have a whole series of these um, experiences and events available some of our teachers will be sharing and presenting them so on Friday June 2nd we're going to be having a day um, set aside for a festival of curiosity to really get fully immersed in all kinds of STEM and STEAM um, activities and initiatives. Um, so it would be very exciting. I really commend Jill Abramson for the work that she does and is doing. Um, very, um, very exciting and um, very innovative person herself. So we're, we're looking forward to that. We have full buy-in from our staff and several of our teachers will be participating and presenting and things so um, more to come on that but I, I hope you all can can come on Friday the 2nd of June and thank you to Seif as well <laughs> thank you uh, the next thing I'll mention is that as you know we're looking this year at uh, updating our emergency response plan uh, this past week we met with a gentleman by the name of uh, Mike Schutz from the um, Cumberland County Emergency Management Agency very, very nice man um, who worked with us at, on uh, really thinking about our plan and both in terms of making it more understandable, uh, streamline it, and to, you know, to really put it into practice. Uh, everybody in the room agreed we need to have a plan that we actually practice regularly. Without it, it doesn't matter how good the plan is. And um, in the room that day were uh, our administrators, school nurses were there, uh, our technology department chair, fire department was there, police department, uh, the Cape Elizabeth Emergency uh, Preparedness Director was also there. I mean, it was a well attended meeting, and I appreciate everybody coming up to, together for this. We're, we're meeting once a month for the next several months to kind of just keep m moving ahead. Some of us are assigned to subcommittees between now and then. Um, so we're taking it very seriously. You're going to end up something I think that's really useful and should be reassuring to our employees and to our parents and students that we've got a plan, we know how it works, we're going to work with it, and, and uh, we will be in much better shape going forward. Um, as you may know, John 
Holdridge is the, among other things, the volunteer coordinator and extended learning director uh, in our school district. He took on the, uh, the ambitious work of looking at our policy regarding volunteers and wondering if it deserves uh, refinement. Um, he met with the administration recently. He also joined a concerned parent and some board members and myself recently to just talk about our, 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 our expectations and, and, and uh, how we go about, uh, how, do, how do we define a volunteer? How do we go about selecting them? What uh, needs to be checked for student safety and so forth? John is continuing to, to dig into looking at different policies in diff different districts and he'll be making a recommendation to our policy committee later I think about ways that we might strengthen our, 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 our volunteer policy. But I, I thank John for that. It's a lot of work. Um, we, we, we have to catch up on what's called mandated training in our district. So there's, there's quite a bit of it. I mean, it ranges from things like uh, what's called bloodborne pathogens and uh, issues around uh, CPR and sexual harassment. I mean, the list is a very long list of things that are required by public employees. Some of these are, are you do once, some of them you do annually, and we're, we're, we aren't where we need to be. Um, this is a serious issue. If things don't go well, and we didn't provide the training, and can't document it, the district's liable, and the employee isn't in a position that, it puts them in an awkward place as well. So. This is going to take some real commitment of time, and planning. We've, we've purchased a software program. It's pretty neat. Uh, you can actually take these trainings on your own or at school, and then you can take a little exam at the end. And when you finish this, if you get a score of whatever, I don't know, 70 or 80% correct, it kicks out a certificate that goes in your file and it shows in our records that you've actually taken it and passed it and you're good. So. Um, principals are working with teachers and with nurses and with others to try and work this out. Some of the trainings are going to be done by personnel rather than video. Some would, they're, they're just, the topics des deserve more of a conversation. So we're doing that as well. I want you to be aware that we, again, hope to have all that in place by the end of this year. So that's another project we're working on. Um, the Teacher Evaluation Committee is um, moving right along. This is the last year of the pilot. Um, next year, as uh, Marguerite says, we're going live. And so this year is the final year for the teachers that have volunteered to be part of the pilot, to have the many visits, the feedback, the conversations, the end of the year write-ups and so forth. Um, we, we feel that it, overall it's going well. Um, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it's a shift. And so we have to get used to the shift in terms of the frequency of the visits and the expedient, timely responses um, and thoughtful goal setting. Um, but I think that we'll be in good shape by next fall. But um, next fall, one third of your teachers that are on continuing contract will be in this plan the second, third, and then, the, and then after that, what's going to happen three years out is that every year, every teacher is going to be getting some form of evaluation. That's a, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> and so um, just want you to know that that work is, is, is moving along. Um, and I think all the teachers and administrators that are sitting on that, on, on that committee and doing all this work. Um, let's see. Also, I, I'd mention that a number of us met um, recently to talk about in this community what we can do to, to maintain and, and pr protect the community's interest in, in, in being a, an inclusive and a, an accepting and an inviting community for, for all people, to include um, minority groups. And we had a meeting upstairs, some parents came, um, some board members came, some administrators came. It was a very nice meeting. We're meeting again, and it's an open meeting. I mean, it, we're meeting on, I think on, is it the 15th or 19th? 15th. The 15th, which I think is a Monday, is that right? It's a Thursday. Thursday, it's close. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, and um, we would encourage others to, to, 
to, to, to, to join us. I mean, we're, we're really trying to think about what we can, we, we don't assume there's a problem in Cape Elizabeth. What we do feel is that if we pay attention to this, we can be better at it. And, and we're, um, so if, if there's interest, please call our office and we'll give you the, the details of where it's being located and what time, I forget what, what, what time it is that. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. And may I just add, it's not just minority focus, it's, it's about, you know, any subgroups that right. are, feel, you know, that are forgotten. Right. Overlooked. Thank you for pointing that out. So that's taking place. And then, um, I think it's all I'm going to say. Ben. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Did you want to do the drop up? Oh, yes, I'll do the dropout. That's a big deal. So we've got the dropout rate. I, I mean, I, I must say, it, it's, it's, no, it's a big deal. I mean, I, if I read this report correctly, it, less than 1% of your students um, dropped out of school in the last year. And that gets a little bit tricky about how you define dropout and all and on and on. But I don't care how you want to say it. It's a very, very low number. And my hat goes off to uh, the, the district. Um, as a whole, and, and, and specifically at, the, at this point in time, the high school, because that, that's where they normally drop out, for keeping them engaged and working with them and looking for alternatives. I mean, to be, to be at less than a percent is uh, very unusual. And I just want to acknowledge that and say congratulations. May I just ask a clarifying question. Um, does the state still sort of hold it against us if we have students who qualify for special education and are you know, allowed to stay until their 20th birthday? Are, are we still sort of placed? Yeah, also the because fifth, I feel also like fifth year, so. fifth year and six, that sort of thing, which is right. appropriate and right. yeah, positive. It's, and, it's, a, it's a great question and the state and I think it's actually driven by the federal reg government, I believe, um, has actually loosened that a little bit. Because it used to be, as your question suggests, that if a student needed a fifth year, particularly if a student was on an individual education plan through special education or whatever, and they got into that fifth year, even though it was absolutely in their best interest and part of their plan, the student was considered a dropout. Um, that's no longer the case. Because um, we do have, uh, every year we have uh, a small handful of students who go into a fifth year. Um, and there are different pathways and different lengths of time, and they're all good. Yeah. Um, so that, that well, penalty really has to, disappeared. Yeah, I'm glad to hear they're not considered dropouts when it's absolutely mm. the opposite. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks. Moving on to new business, item 7A. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the donation and placement of a granite memorial bench on the grounds of the Cape Elizabeth High School athletic fields in the name of Tom Wright. A second? Hmm. Discussion? I don't know, Howard or I, I, Jeff. I'm happy to. So let me just get this down. So we have been approached by uh, the Wright family, um, they, they are interested in donating a, a granite memorial bench um, in, in honor of, of, of Tommy, and a location has been agreed to between Jeff uh, Thorak and the family, but it's near the tennis courts, which apparently was very special to, to all of them. And um, we think it's, it's consistent with board policy and and it um, seems very very special to do this so we, we we're in agreement um, as administration and would hope that you would would, 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 would give permission for uh, this to be put in place sometime in the spring there's no cost to the district further discussion or questions no. It's a wonderful family. His older brother graduated with my daughter back in 95, so I think it's lovely that they're offering this in Tommy's behalf. Hmm. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 7B. <coughs> we, we look at that I move that we um, approve to reappoint 
uh, Smita Santi, uh, our, our Dr. Smita Santi as school district physician. Second. Discussion? I believe this is how many years for Dr. Santi, uh, at least? Yeah, at least the third or third, fourth. Yeah. Very helpful, too. Yeah. Very, very My special. understanding. Mm, lucky. Mm -hmm. Very. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Item 7C, may I have a motion, please? Yes, I move that we approve um, the slate of nominees to the school board's 2016-17 Superintendent Search Advisory Screening Committee. Um, starting with School Building Administrator Kelly Hassan, Central Office Administrator Kathy Stankard, Teacher from the High School Mark Pendarvis, Teacher from the Middle School, school Talia Edlin, Teacher from Pond Cove Linda Alfiero, uh, and the following, following parents, Jennifer Sc Scarpiti Nelson, Rebecca Roth Barbieri, and Mara DeGeorge as our community member, and Jim Clark as our community member. And thank you to all the volunteers. I will. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I would like to thank everybody who has offered to serve on this committee. This is exciting work, and we appreciate your willingness to, to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Would you like to just give a brief overview of the responsibilities that these people have stepped up and certainly um, everybody who has stepped up is very aware that there is a mandatory training and then um, the committee will be allowed time to read and screen applications. Um, there will be physical applications, not online applications and um, after everybody has had time to read and make notes. There will be one evening of um, getting the work done and making recommendations to the board for first round interviews. And that will kind of be the dissolution of that committee at that point. And I know I see in the notes here that this group includes three board, the three board members we voted on earlier. earlier. Important work. Yes, mm -hmm. very important work. So thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item D, may I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the slate of nominees to the school board's 2016 17 superintendent, superintendent Search Interview Committee. Um, in the, for the school building administrator, Mike Tracy, for the central office administrator, Jessica Clark, for the high school teacher, Joel Schroeder, middle school teacher, Talia Edlin, and Ponco teacher, Kate Whipple. May I have a second, please? A second? Thank you. I'd also like to note that um, this committee will include the entire school board as well. Mm -hmm. And the work of this committee will be to take the recommendations of the advisory screening committee and interview and narrow that group for a second round of interviews. And the second round of interviews are to be conducted by, by the school board only. Okay. All those in favor? Well, I just oh. wanted to make one observation, sorry. That I um, want to thank Joel Schroeder for once again stepping up. I know that he did this in the prior interview round as well. Mm -hmm. So we have some experience on that. And thank you to everybody who has stepped up for that part of this process. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Item E. Oh, I have one more question. <coughs> Sorry. Is there um, a timeline for um, expectations for 
both the advisory screening committee and then the subsequent interview committee, just to give the public an idea of what the timelines are. Yes, there is a timeline, and it is posted under the timeline tab on the superintendent search website. And I'm not going to try to relay all that information, but please go to the school department website, and at the top, you can click on superintendent search. But everything gets underway in mid-January. Mid-January. <laughs> Thank you, I'll stop. <laughs> Item E, may I have a motion please? I move we approve the co-curricular job descriptions as set out in our packets for a K-12 professional development committee member and grades seven through 12 proficiency-based education committee member. Second. <laughs> Discussion? Um, I'm just curious, the, the position of professional de development committee member, is, is that, that, I'm just curious about more information about that, if someone could just address it. Hello, and since this is my first time at the podium, I'm going to officially introduce myself. I'm Kathy Stanker, and I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning. And at least I think this is my first time at the podium. I can't really remember, but in any case, um, so this committee came about because there was a desire on the part of teachers and specialists and other staff members to have a more of a voice in the professional development that they participate in throughout the course of the year. We have uh, we have two in-service days. We have. Um, six professional development Mondays and we have a number of early releases at Pond Cove. So this is a committee that consists of currently uh, myself, special education director, the three principals and um, three to four teachers or specialists from each school and it's been a wonderful experience so far. I realize you're voting on it now but we have been meeting in the hopes that you would approve us <laughs> and um, and I think people are feeling very good about the work um, that they're doing both at the committee level and in terms of um, on those, uh, d during those professional development opportunities that we've had so far. So I'm just curious, how, how different will this be going forward? How will it look different? Like there's just more input from teachers on what to focus on? Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My understanding was that in last year or prior years that there was some disconnect between uh, central office administrators and teachers around um, the nature of the professional development that occurred. So we just really wanted to be more inclusive um, this year. So. Okay. Just a quick question and a comment. First, I think this is a fabulous idea, one fabulous way to collect great feedback loop in the system, which is always good. Um, I'm curious, is there any fiscal implication for this? Are there stipends for these positions? Yes. Yes, they are stipended in accordance with uh, the contract, the teacher contract. Okay. Thanks. Okay. As long as I'm up here, any questions about the second committee? Sure. Speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything you want us to know in particular? Um, no, I'm just really excited to be getting that particular committee going. Yeah, that's great. And the uh, more succinct approach to rubric development, too, I'm sure you're happy about. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Very happy to see those school-wide rubrics. <laughs> well, changing. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I would imagine the two different committee members would be closely tied working together. They will be. Yeah. They will be. And, and I expect that we'll have some overlap, actually, in committee membership, I too. I think so. Is there discussion around um, professional development? There are different kinds of, there, that's a one name for lots of different things. There's just sort of work that has to get done, kind of ground out. And then there's really, you know, professional enrichment and that sort of thing. And so. Right. And we're taking both into consideration. And so, so for example, um, they, they, are, they are planning the, uh, the work that is accomplished on, those, on, the, on the professional development time that's built into the calendar. But they are also weighing in on the budget for professional development for next year, as well as procedures around 
applying for professional development, <coughs> evaluating professional development. So it's, it's both. It's both that curriculum work that never ends and also um, that professional development that feeds the, the teacher's soul. Mm -hmm. I have a question. And um, because we heard a lot about some special needs at the elementary level, is this, is this group also helping direct the additional elementary release time with Principal Hassan? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we have um, <clears throat> four very energetic, <laughs> vocal <laughs> um, members of the Professional Development Committee from Pond Cove. Right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item F. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the 2016 2017 administrative and athletic co curricular personnel nominations as outlined in our minutes. Uh, agenda. It will eventually be in the minutes. A second? Thank you. <laughs> Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Item G, may I have a motion, please? I move that we approve Cape Elizabeth's pass part one and part two budget cost for the 2017-18 school year in the amount of $72,659 and two pennies. Second. Discussion? Uh, I would just like to point out that as a sending school to the Paths Institution, which offers incredible opportunities for our students to enrich and, and diversify their pathway to a, um, to a graduation, that we, of all the sending schools other than Westbrook, um, have some of the lowest rates in which we send our students. And I would love to see our students take more advantage of mm -hmm. this incredible asset that they have to their learning opportunities. There's plenty of room for growth. Yeah, which is why it's so low. And I'd like to add to what Joe's just saying, because I think that point is a really important one. Um, having been on the past committee for <coughs> my first two years, um, each, each time I was, the monthly meeting that I would go to, I was always so encouraged and inspired by the courses they offer and how they can overlap for so many of our students. Um, e even, if, even if they would not traditionally think that PAS might have something for them to offer, it, I think it could for anybody and everybody who, who's open to the possibility of trying something different. It's, it's a... It's an awesome feature that we can offer. Mm -hmm. For the benefit of the public, PADS is, I know it by two Portland names, Arts and someone's going, it used to be called Portland Area Technology High School and also Portland Arts and Technology High School. So, either way, offering a variety of programs for students that um, it would be great if we could find a way to increase that. Um, attendance from our school and half a, half a day program so they attend high school classes half the day and half at paths mm -hmm. juniors and seniors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a bus right out front at lunchtime mm -hmm. easy access further discussion no no, no. <laughs> no just <laughs> thinking <laughs> further discussion just all those in favor thank you Item eight, <coughs> committee reports. <coughs> um, policy. policy. I would just I would just say we had we had hoped to have a first reading of the bullying prevention policy, but we just need a little bit more time to iron out a few less details. It's a pretty comprehensive policy uh, up, upgrade to what we have currently on the books, as it includes a series of reporting requirements, and the principals and the policy committee are working through those details and we'll have them for you in January. Thank you. Um, 
Well, to the Spurwing Committee, we have nothing to report out. We haven't met since uh, our last uh, board meeting here, so we'll hopefully <coughs> analyze that in January and get back to you with that Thank you. Uh, report. Um, and secondly, uh, the Calendar Committee, it's really exciting to talk about the possibilities and um, the idea of cultivating one of the goals that we have as a school board, the K-12 curriculum and cohesiveness throughout um, within our schedule. And uh, some of the things that we're looking at is having to do with the professional development uh, time and really allocating time where um, specific grades can meet uh, across on the level, but then as well, K-12 can meet in accordance that we have at way laterally as well as vertically along the school um, subjects. And um, that's really exciting. And the idea is to, we're ironing it out still, but to possibly have regular professional development day uh, twice a month um, in the afternoons. Um, so that's great. And we're looking at conferences and how to uh, potentially make conferences more available to parents. Uh, yet make it not so gloomy for teachers, if possible. <coughs> so it's, it's quite the juggle. There's a lot of factors to consider. Uh, the number of days that students have to go uh, to school as well as uh, contracts with teachers. And so um, I think there's been some really good discussions, but um, we have a meeting this Thursday at three o'clock, I believe, and we're gonna wrap it up. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's very optimistic. Anyway, it's very exciting. I don't know if anybody has anything else they'd like to contribute. That's but great. I think you did great. Mm -hmm. a lot of great discussion. Great. Any other committee reports? Um, I'd like to also just sort of <laughs> say that, um, well, it's an upcoming announcement. Do that now. We can move on to announcements of upcoming meetings. That's so acceptable. The next finance committee meeting then is um, next Tuesday, uh, December 20th. Is that next Tuesday already? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, where we will be discussing the CIP and further discussions of the upcoming budget process in case you want more than what I gave you earlier. You. And that will be at the high school library starting at 6.30. Policy. And policy will be meeting right after the um, New Year's break on Tuesday, January 3rd at 6.30 p.m. downstairs here. Are you throwing a party? Say again? Are you throwing a party? <laughs> yeah, right. we'll be recovering from the party. <laughs> Any other announcements? Oh, just to um, repeat the meeting that Howard mentioned uh, on uh, December 15th at 5 o'clock, and it is at an unusual location, which is um, at 541 Ocean House Road, which is, if anybody knows where Tamara Landscaping is, that's, we're having it there. It's where I have a studio, but we wanted to make it open to the community, and it feels like that might be a, a community, more of a community setting than boardroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. So. That's great. Thank you. Further announcements? Item 11, Kimberly, would you like to make the motion? Or I say just, I'm, you move that we adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Second. All those in favor. Thank you.